Well, uh, Mark, this is Raul. He's the host. I'm going to be playing the background. And if you guys need any notes or anything, uh, I'll stick it in there. I, I did uh, send Raul a couple links for your books oh, on cool. Amazon. I don't know if you uh, have a – do you have an official website? It was so hard to find your website. Uh, no, no. I just have people literally type search engine uh, Flat Earth Mark. That's it. Okay. I mean, you can go to my YouTube clip, YouTube page. That's probably yeah. There. Like I have that in the show notes. Yeah, That'll yeah. be in the show notes. But too. but no, there's no there's no official website. I don't even have an agent because I don't want one. <laughs> Let's be honest. I I don't want people telling me it's like oh this is what you should be doing here and you should be talking to this person over here. It's like no, no. I'm gonna treat this like I always have, which is they call me, they call me. If they don't call me, they don't call me. I, I perfect example would have been that um um uh the the mobile commercial I did in Australia. That was out of freaking nowhere, right? And somebody calls me up and they say, hey, how would you like to do a, a mobile commercial in um, Melbourne? It's like, well, it's like, can you be here in like 10 days? And I was like, okay, sure. It's like, we'll send tickets and you know, sign this contract. And that was it. I was on my on my way. And it's like, if I had an agent, I would have never gotten that. Nice. You know, I, I believe in everything for a reason. So cool. Is there anything you want right to Right on. So I'll just... So I'll just do the intro to the show, and then uh, we send it over to our the, the producer, and he'll clean up all the audio. He'll send it to an additional filter, clean up any any noisy mess in the background or anything that's uneven. If somebody's mic's coming in louder, he'll do all that on uh, post production, and he'll add the music and all that stuff. Perfect. So, when you guys perfect. are ready, man. We'll just get started since you got a hard stop at six thirty. Yep. All right. Well, hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Firmamental Podcast. I am your host, Raul. We got Alex along for the ride as well, and we got a very, very special guest in the house today. Actually, one of the biggest names in the world of Flat Earth and, and the Truth community. Um, and, I mean, this man needs no introduction. Uh, we got Mark Sargent with us today, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, go ahead and say hello to the Firmamentalist out here. Hi, guys, and thank you very much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure. And by the way, I'd like to say this is the first time, and I'm, I'm, I come from the gaming world, I have never seen a gaming headset where the mic lights up. That is <laughs> so cool. I'm not yeah, exactly man. sure why you would have that. <laughs> but that is so neat. Yeah, man, you know what? This was actually a, a present to one of my kids, and I was looking for my other microphone, and I just grabbed this, and I was like, this will work. So as long as it's sounding good coming through, that's No, no, it sounds do. great. I'm just wondering. It's like, I wonder if the selling <laughs> point is you know if you're doing like a streaming thing, you know if your mic's on because you you can look down, and, and if that light's off, well, you're not doing it. Yeah, exactly. I guess playing video games in the dark, right, is for those kiddos so they can they can see that that it's still live. That's That's got to be it. <laughs> <laughs> be it. right on well uh as you guys know uh mark is a video game designer and uh he is a huge name in the flat earth world and i was just going to start off by saying a few things housekeeping and then we'll get into it mark but i did want to remind people uh go check out the website the firmamentalpodcast.com also if you want to contribute to the show you find value in the show I will put a link to the cash app in there uh, because we're trying to do some new things with the show and expand. Uh, we don't air advertisement. We're not in this for the money, but you know, if you want to contribute to the movement and, and uh, help us grow this podcast and, and, and get into some of these other features that we want to add, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take any contributions to the show graciously and, and with um, big thank yous. Also, uh, Pretty much that's all I have. Do you have anything else uh, for the firmamentalist, Alex? No way. I'm just here for the ride. I'm looking forward to hearing everything Mark has to say. And, uh, you know, I'll just chime in when I when I get too itchy. Oh, I did want to mention, too, also on the website, we will have a, a speak pipe message system. So you can leave voice messages to us. And we want to start doing episodes of AR-15 where Alex and myself will respond to some of your questions and get a little bit more interactive with you guys. So, um, and with no further ado, let's just get into it with Mark. So, uh, Mark, yes. I, I, you know what, um, I did want to tell you, so I was just going through, uh, some of your material today and just getting prepared for th this, uh, episode that we're recording. Yeah. And, and you know what, I happened to just go look at your Wikipedia, man. And I just wanted to tell you, have you read your Wikipedia? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I okay. Have deliberately so deliberately not. 
Yeah, like, so I, know, I mean, I don't know who does this stuff for me. I have absolutely no idea. They don't even they don't even send me an email to say, "Oh, hey, by the way, you have an IMDb page. Hey, hey, you got a wiki page." It's like, who's doing this? Thank you, yeah. whoever whoever it is. Although the wiki page I hear is is got some problems with it. Oh man, I mean, I just think it's ridiculous the way that they paint us, you know. And I I actually. Alex and myself are two guys that hate the term conspiracy theorist right. because we know that that comes from the three letter organizations that were trying to discredit so. people who were questioning the the narrative and the the mainstream uh, news story of Kennedy's assassination. Right. So it goes all the way back then. Right. You know, we like to call ourselves truth seekers and we're people that are uh, critical thinkers that are just asking questions that we that we want answers for. Right. But uh, I was reading your Wikipedia. So without reading it, I was yeah. going to read a couple things to you and get your reaction. On oh, this. sure. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's an interesting, uh, you know, because I listened to a few interviews you did. I list, went and, of course, listened to Flat Earth Files with George Hobbs. Yeah. And shout out to him. Um, I wouldn't be doing this show if it wasn't for him. He kind of motivated me to get this thing going. Oh, cool. And shout out to Robert Lick from uh, the Flat Earth Reality. I listened to your episode on there as well. Nice. So um, I just wanted to take a different angle with this, but I wanted to see, since you said you haven't read the Wikipedia, it's not. funny because they, they, they refer to you as an American conspiracy theorist who was one of the leading proponents and recruiters of the flat earth conspiracy, a belief that has no scientific merit. So there's part of it. Yeah. And then, yeah. So immediately they discredit everything that we're talking about, right? Right, right off the bat. They're just like, this is, uh, non-scientific they're going to call us science deniers right 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 um and then they and then it's funny this is where i i completely laughed and to me i'm like okay this makes him even way cooler to me but it says mark also claims that all astronauts are freemasons and he believes in bigfoot and then what? it goes on to say yes and then it goes on to say <laughs> that because he and he has so much time to spend researching or or making these claims because he has he's single and he has no kids and he has plenty of times on his hand plenty of time on his hands that and last I, part how that, well the last <laughs> the last part is is true in a sense that i i have not gotten married or had kids and i've mentioned that a whole bunch of times including in books where I, i've said look if in fact the line is if you don't get married or have kids you have huge amounts of free time i mean as the years go by i mean you have so much time to, to do things that, uh, yeah, I mean, again, that's how I got into it was I, I had a lot of time to dig into the Internet back when you could finish the Internet. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, the, the, those parts about I, I don't know if I've ever said in an interview that all astronauts are Freemasons. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of our people in our community that have said that. And I do believe that's true, that they they make them Freemasons because uh, it's all about keeping the secret. That one of the lead things about Freemasonry, if you know it, it's it's keeping the secret, keep it secret, keep it secret. Um, that is that is their that when they when you go through the degrees, especially like the one through 32, that's what they beat into you every single time, which is here's our lesson. And if you don't keep this secret, here's a, 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 a death that will befall you. You know, it's all each one is different and more gruesome as you go up the ladder. So by the time you make your 32nd degree, you've been threatened at least with 32 different types of dying. So whatever. What was the other one? Oh, Bigfoot. Um I don't know. I'm, I've got mixed mixed feelings on Bigfoot. I, I don't really have an opinion. I mean, it's like, yeah, sure, it could be possible, but I haven't done anything specifically. I don't think there's a single video on my channel about Bigfoot. So, did he, did he, did we lose him? I don't know. Is he frozen? He is, fro he, he is frozen. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Well, I'll just uh, take the reins here until Okay. He, uh, while, while he's going back, you might want to type to him in chat that, uh, or here, I'll I'll type to him while you got a while you think of something. Hey man, <laughs> are frozen. Happens to the best of us. Exactly, technical difficulties. All right, so it's it's the Alex and Mark show. Yeah, we'll just get them back here as quick as we can. Right. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, um, Flattoberfest. Actually, I'm I'm excited oh, yeah. about you. You're going to be at Flat Flattoberfest. I'm opening. To... I'm opening, and I'm helping to uh, MC Flattoberfest. So it is our yearly convention. the 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 first one we did, which we, which you saw in the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve, was in Raleigh, North Carolina. The second one was in Denver. That was in 2018. 2019 was in Dallas. That was a load of fun. And then 2020 happened. 
And as you probably, a lot of people don't know, because how many people do conventions, we couldn't book a convention hall because everybody required masks. We Because 2020 was supposed to be in Vegas. And it's like, right. sorry, you can't come unless your whole group, unless every of the, the tens of conferences was going, that's not going to, that's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, at least I would say 90 to 95% of, of our community does not, it has nothing to do with a shot in the arm, that whole thing. Right. And the ones that did were, it was basically, if I don't do this, I'm going to be homeless. And they, they weren't kidding him. I'm going, and I don't blame them. Look, that's a tough choice. It's like guaranteed homeless or shot in the arm. What, what, you know, what do you, what do you do in that case? So anyway, um, so for the last three years, we, Karen B from uh, her channel, um, uh, Unveiling the Realm and Karen B., uh she was doing conferences she we found a place down in um the carolinas it was a believe it or not a um a shrine all right hey i'm back you know what i'm just uh, you know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it from my phone because for okay. some reason this computer this computer is tripping man that's okay. i don't know what's going on yeah so hey uh i i think i got good clean sound let me just shut my door because I, I unlike you my house is a very busy place i got uh, four sons, but three that still live at home and okay. and six pets. So I'm shutting my door and we're going to get started again. Okay. <laughs> Is Alex with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, there you I are. was just keeping it. I was just keeping it going with Mark. Hey, so what we can do is we can just, uh, Cla Claude can edit that out and I'll just, I'll just chime in and let him know that we had some, um, technical difficulty, but I wanted to pick up where we left off. All right. Sure. 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 So, so, so folks, uh, Sorry, we had some technical difficulty and we're back live. So you're going to hear a cutout. Uh, you'll you'll be able to tell where it is, but uh, we're going to keep it rocking and rolling. We're going to pick up where we left off. Okay. So I, was, I was just mentioning to Mark that it's kind of funny how they paint this picture of yeah. of you to try to make it, you know, to totally discredit, you know, anything. And you, you know, got, guys like us, we're flat earthers too. So we know you have great information and we're on board with everything you're saying. <laughs> and we... Uh, we believe in real science, not scientism. Right. Right. right and, right. uh, and, and things that have been passed down from, from one secret society member to another, that's trying to hide the existence of God, you know? Yep. And, but it's funny because they make, they, they say all this stuff to people who don't know anything about this information. Uh, it's, it's right away of painting this picture of you that you're a crackpot, right? Sure. Here's a single here. And I'm not saying this because this is not my opinion of you, but yeah. the way they make it sound is here's this single guy with no kids, Probably because, you know, and oh, he's, I'm weird. he's a crazy yeah. guy who who thinks every everybody in NASA is a Freemason. And by the way, he believes in Bigfoot. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Right. I, it doesn't. And and you're right. <laughs> um, I don't mind that much because, uh, the, as the old saying goes, uh, um, well, the one that most people know is all all presses or even bad press is good press. But that's the original saying is even bad press is free. And, exactly. And in this case, you know, I don't mind if they go to the wiki page and they're intrigued. If You know, honestly, it should be even more sensational. I, I wouldn't care what, what they put in there as long as they, you know, someone, it, even if it affects just a handful of people and they dig into it and they see it and try to find me and get to one of my interviews, they'll know in about two seconds that I'm not some sort of deranged lunatic. Although, although lately I've been calling myself a part-time cult leader just to, just to amp it up a little bit. <laughs> Because I'm really surprised that over the years, because I've been doing this for eight years now, that we haven't been painted as some sort of cult. You know, we we use a lot of the same verbiage. You know, um, we but 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 the the earmarks that usually are associated with it, we don't have. You know, we don't have a, um, a flat Earth Bible officially. We don't have robes. We don't have a compound. We're not chanting on a regular basis. <laughs> so we're okay. You know, I think that's coming down the pipeline. And that's actually another thing that I wanted to bring up, because I think this was post your show, like you went on Flatter Files with George Hobbs, right? And then he right. had a call in show. Right. And we had a caller who's a friend of ours of the Firmamental show that called in and defended you because, you know, George is going to let people air out their opinion. He's not going to He's not going to uh, mute your mic or, sure. you know, he might respectfully say, I respectfully disagree with you, but right. he's going to let you finish your thought and speak your mind. And it was a call in show. And, and, you know, somebody was uh, claiming, you know, oh, you know, Mark Sargent is a government shill. And, right. you know, and, and I, 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 I want to address this on our show specifically. That stuff needs to stop. 
bro. And and uh, I think you've been painted incorrectly. And uh, and you know what? I think that for our for the flat earth community to to continue to grow and and see what we want to see happen, we need to learn to like get along and we need to not be claim making claims against one another because a house divided amongst itself will fall. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people out here that are making these claims and and they're unwarranted. So what's your, I, I, what do you have to say about that? I agree. And, and thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, the, the, where it stemmed from, and by the way, it's inter interesting. You mentioned that uh, divided we fall because I was actually going to title the, the podcast I was doing tonight, divided we fall, but instead I wanted to take a more positive spin. I called it United. We stand. Um, there you go. <laughs> only because people know how that, what, what that follows with. And, and it's mostly about America and how the, they're, they're polarizing red team and blue team to such an extent now that I don't think it, it's going to, it's already happening to where red team and blue team, even if you have family members, just aren't going to talk to each other anymore, which is yeah. like, just blows my mind. It's like beforehand, you know, we could do family matters. We could have beers and everything. Oh, you're blue team. I'm red team. Yeah. Have a drink. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now yeah. it's a nightmare. But as far as you know, the whole government shill thing, that started with Eric back in the day. And I understood it eight years ago when he did it, which was there are some people, and uh, this happens in media and the stage all the time, he doesn't like to share the light with anybody. And any, if basically the, the line he might as well use is, and he and I have never uh, spoken officially, where it, he's, if you're not with me, you're against me. Mm -hmm. so and he used to do that in for his forums he had a um international flat earth research research society um forum to where if you came in and said even something neutral about myself or jaron or bob or patricia or whatever he'd ban you just be like no ban banned i mean he ran yeah. into an absolute iron fist and because of that uh, let me mention something really quick I didn't I was very naive in that I didn't understand the 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 power the influence that his group had which was you know he was the one that told ODD back in 2015 he said tell all your people that are thinking of going to that first conference not to go cuz everybody there that's not me is basically a government agent it's like okay and so there's this little scene which you didn't did, it was kind of glossed over in the movie where there was like 100 between 100 and 150 seats in the back totally empty totally paid for that being it was a non-refundable conference and people were like are you no, no. are you talking I, did, I don't mean to cut you off but i just okay. want to make it clear so so the listeners understand are you talking about the netflix movie or you're talking about the level movies netflix movie okay so the netflix movie there was this part where robbie davidson comes up to me and goes he goes just so you know he goes there's gonna be empty seats in the back and i go why he goes because odd who was not at that conference he goes he told all his people last minute he goes don't go to the conference this is gonna be nothing but government agents and you know how twitchy you know the truth yeah it can be and i mean they were eating all that money thousands of dollars just burned and there was nothing we could do it was like oh crap you know we you know, yeah but we filled in a few at the door but it was it was that that was what and he eric never backed down from that he just kept every year every year he just kept throwing that stuff out there so i get it fine you want to say i'm a government agent please somebody after eight years give me give me something you know give me give me a, something that points in some some sort of direction i was talking to alex before you came on i was like yeah. i can't be because i've been accused they they can't even agree on what agency i work for you know whether it's a you know <laughs> fbi cia um secret service nsa um naval intelligence whatever it's like look you got to pick one and then maybe, you know, we can work something out. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of work with you on that. And it's like, no, nope, no, nope, they won't even pick one. So whatever. It's fine. Yeah. You know, I just think that, it, that it's kind of sad that we have to resort to that. And, you know, I don't have anything personal against anybody and I'm, I'm fairly new to this community. Um, I don't think necessarily to the truth community because I've been researching what they would consider conspiracy for quite some time, right. but I'm relatively new to the flat earth. Like this is something that within the last year, specifically in the last six months that I've really, but like, I'm, I'm the type of person when, I, when once I get exposed to something and, and I find that it, it to be true, I'm going to go balls to the wall, baby. So yeah. like, I'm, I like, I completely consume so much material, like in a short amount of time, I think I'm like a lot more well-versed in it than most people who've been exposed to it for this amount of time, but much respect to the, to the forefathers who laid down all this groundwork. <laughs> and it kind of sucks that you guys have, have like, well, you know, the truth is the truth. So the real forefather is the creator. 
Right. But you know, it just sucks because I, I I hope this doesn't happen to the to the flat Earth community specifically in the truth community, but specifically the flat Earth portion of the truth community, where you know um, we become such a big threat that we do get really infiltrated, like they did to the Black Panthers or the Bloods and Crips when they were originally community resistance programs, it, and they you know it, the mafia like all these organizations have been infiltrated sure so like what do you see for the future for flat earth as far as the things that we'll face the adversities we'll face and and like what we need to do and what do you see flat earth like the real impact that you think it can have on on the world well what do you see the the real impact and as far as being infiltrated i have i've you know i've gone on record several times and i've said look it's so hard to pretend to be a flat earther. And I'm not talking about, you know, garden variety, just sit in the seats and listen type type person. We're talking <laughs> somebody that makes makes content. I have mm -hmm. never watched content ever to where I've looked at the person and and said, oh, my God, this is so suspect. You know, even Eric, when he when he comes after people and creates dissension in the ranks. Yeah, but that's just because he's an ass. It's not because he's a government <laughs> agent. He's just a jerk. And <laughs> it's like. You know that that doesn't want to play well with others, which is which I totally get. You know that there's one in every bunch. As far as the the flat Earth and what it means, it I I don't think let's put it this way: if they were going to infiltrate, they would have done it by now because they were promoting us nonstop for at least three years. I mean, YouTube especially was just promoting us as a <clears throat> binge topic from 2015 through 2018 easily i mean because youtube is the biggest television network in the world and they have lifetimes worth of content you'll never ever ever run out of stuff to yeah watch on youtube most of it's crap but still there's there's stuff out there so for me i think and i don't know again what the powers that be what what their role is in this but for me it is i believe in what i call the um the, the tower of babel protocol Meaning, and it's going to sound kind of weird, but you'll 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 get it. You know, if you, if you follow biblical stuff at all, you know the the very first story in the Bible was the Tower of Babel, one of the shortest stories ever, but for me, one of the most moving, because it was, you know, this perfect before us, there was this civilization that was created that was perfect, essentially in every way. They were unified, they were driven, they were focused, and unfortunately, they figured out where they were almost immediately, <laughs> like. <laughs> okay i can see what's happening here it's like yeah, fire up the engineers we're we're going we're 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 building a, a a bridge straight to god's door right and and the story ends basically with god looking down going oh crap this is not gonna work out at all they're gonna make it you know because again trying to build a bridge to this you know to the ceiling of this place would, would take some amazing uh, uh engineering abilities so and then at that point, OK, more what we need is more languages, scatter, 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 get rid of that tower. Right. And then, you know, w you know, start again. But I think afterwards, after the tower fell and, you know, this is not something that would be in the Bible, this would be something behind the scenes, which is you would build in some sort of <clears throat> threshold system, meaning if, if you were God, you'd, you'd have some sort of early warning detection to where. Once a civilization, because remember, you, you've heard me say this in different things. We're not the first people to rent this apartment by any stretch. You know, our, our civilization only goes back unbroken 5,000 years. There were other groups before us. I mean, the, the Babel people, at the very least. So I think once civilization reaches some sort of threshold, be it population or awareness of, of where you are, situational awareness, then at that point, God steps in. Or at the very least, whoever God is subcontracted out to to be the supervisor of this place, and then we then whatever happens happens. But so for me, that's that is what flat Earth potentially could do. Because seriously, once you reach that tipping point where more people believe in flat Earth than believe in the the heliocentric model, you know the whole solar system thing. What happens to us as a civilization? You know, even without the whole biblical side of things. I mean that's that's a huge change in in uh, huge paradigm change. So that that for me is what potentially could happen. Plus, of course, opening everybody's mind up really puts the the microscope on on the powers that be. Because remember, once you believe in flat Earth, you have to revisit every conspiracy. And I got to use the word. Why not? 
um, you have to re revisit every conspiracy that's ever ever been laid out there. Because remember, Flat Earth would be top tier because it's the whole world. I had a whole bunch of 9-11, um, by the way, people yell at me when, when I started doing this. It's like, you're you're distracting from the biggest conspiracy, which is 9-11. I'm just going, well, <laughs> is it, though? I mean, it was only in America, and it was only in one city. I mean, this is a little bit bigger in scope than than your thing. I, it's tragic as it was. So, anyway, does that kind of answer your question, Honda? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I'm right along with you. You know, I, I thought, like, uh, me and Alex always kid around, you know, and he does jujitsu. Uh, but we always kid around, like, oh, you know, I, I thought I was maybe perhaps, like, getting to black belt and conspiracy theory. And then, <laughs> boom, all of a sudden you find out about Flat Earth and you're, like, demoted back down to yellow belt. And you're like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> you no, know, and I, then you I... have. I disagree. I think you guys were were black dots. Same same with me. Look, by I'm older, and by the time I got to Flat Earth, and this part was absolutely true, I had looked at every conspiracy you could possibly think of. Then I looked at Flat Earth, and then I'm like, oh man, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother color to the martial arts system, which you didn't even know was there. You know, like a double <laughs> platinum diamond coated thing. That you're like, what is this? What is this thing? And and unfortunately, yes, it does diminish from the others because then you realize how petty the others were, you know, in, in comparison. But at the same time, it I, it's there's a huge amount of irony in that it's the one conspiracy that everybody hates when they're first looking at it. I, again, the the line I've used uh, it was in the first part of my clues, and I'm not kidding you, where I had friends that literally were like, "Dude, the whole royal family is made up of lizard people." Going, oh, wow, that's really something, right? I go, what about flat Earth? They're like, get the hell out of here! <laughs> like, yeah. And it's like, you just told me about lizard people, and yet you're gonna you're gonna point me to the door? Seriously? That's that's the the level that it's at. It's so big, it's insane to to even think yeah. about. Yeah, you know, well, for me, it 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 made me have to reevaluate some of my thoughts and some of my conclusions to other conspiracy theories because Genesis Six was a big one for me, and then I kind of like I went down that whole paradigm of like the ancient astronaut theory and Eric von Daniken and and you know reading all that literature, and and now that I'm a flat Earth person i'm like way more biblical i mean i've always believed in god and the creator right. and i've always you know I, I don't like the term christian i call myself a follower of jesus uh but you know um i i do attend a church but they're not like <laughs> most churches out here these people don't give a crap about their 501 c3 and uh they're not going to listen to a corrupt government that would tell them to stop congregating because they obey God's laws, not man's laws. So that's why I go where I to go to church, gotcha. you know, but, uh, gotcha. but, um, you know, it, it did make me, I was like, whoa, you know, we're, I, we're not going to get slammed by a comet, you know, we're not going to get invaded by extraterrestrials. And if we are, then it's probably, you know, uh, something else, uh, uh, you know, one of the biggest false flags ever when they pull that one. Right. Yeah. But, uh, that's what, I, I mean, flat earth rocks your world, dude. Yeah. It really changes everything. Yeah. And by the way, that's why um, I was so grateful for um, Rob Skiba when he did all that legwork, uh, you know, before he passed away and, and created the uh, the website testingtheglobe.com because he was the one that called me up. And again, I love the, I may introduce that into the into my speech in Vegas next month, which is I want people to tell me how I ruin their lives. Right. Because Rob Skiba had this wonderful slide that he put up there. It's like April 15th, 2015, the day Mark Sargent ruined my life. And I'm like, I, it's like, I know why he did it. It was his, it was his out. It was his insurance policy. Therefore, if flat earth collapsed, he could just point. It's like, well, I was only 98% there. It was, it was that Mark Sargent guy's fault. But he was uh, one of the guys that called me up before the website was even up. And he, and he goes, he goes, look, he goes, the Bible's a flat earth book. He goes, he goes, it's going to be a tough sell to the, uh, the, the relig religious communities. But it is a flat earth book because there's only one verse in the entire thing that even hints at some sort of uh, globe. And that's um, uh, Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. But Rob was quick to point out, he's like, look, in, in Hebrew, circle is a different word from globe, which is a different word from ball or sphere. And he goes, circle's a dinner plate. It's a hubcap. He goes, the, it, he goes it's it, everything else. Unfortunately, he said, because that's there. He goes, pastors will hang on to it like it has veto power. 
and and which seems funny right it's like over genesis right where, yeah. where you know, the 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 firmament separates the water above and below and it's like but yeah that's that's all they need plus of course the fear the the peer pressure is is just too massive the bigger the as you know the, the bigger congregation you have the more pressure there is i mean really you're gonna go up to the, to the mic and say okay so we're going back to some old school stuff where the earth is basically flat the even though there's a lot of people who would understand it if given the time, the knee-jerk reaction would be like, no, hell with this. I'm out of here. I'm going to go to that church yeah, down, they, the, down the road. You've lost your mind. And I don't remember the name, and maybe you or Alex Alex could chime in. Who was the guy, the pastor that was just on, Rob or Rod, that was just on Flat Earth Files? That was tremendous because he was one of the brave few that was willing to step out and say like, hey, look. I believe that God showed me this and I got confirmation through the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I answer to him, not the congregation. And, and he said, yeah, he lose a good chunk of his congregation. But you know how many people, I mean, even guys like uh, John Kerwin, you might be aware of, you know, uh, that are starting uh, online groups, online churches. Uh, you know, there are churches that I think that are starting to pop up that, uh, you know, my pastor is not completely on board, but he doesn't say no, 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 no. Like he knows what I talk about. Right. And he just kind of says like, I'm, I'm into getting people obedient and, and getting people right with the Lord and, and making sure they're living the best walk that they could live. Uh, I don't think he thinks that it's taboo to talk about, but he's just like a lot of the congregation is not ready for it. So he hasn't brought it up, but he knows what I talk about and he hasn't thrown me out of church. So awesome. You know, I, I go somewhere where they're, they're open-minded because well, you have to be, well, but like, once you see this, you can't unsee it. Right? right. Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Once you see this thing, it is absolutely Pandora's box. Um, and, and you're lucky in that here we are eight years later, you know, after flat earth 2.0 came and, and went across the scene, um, back in 2015, a, a quick story for you. There was a, a producer from New York for true television and she, she, that was a visionary she absolutely saw what this thing could be she's like oh this this is going to be freaking huge and she did um she did screen tests she created a sizzle reel for everybody and again this is at the end of 2015 we hardly had anyone in jaron wasn't even i think in it at the time i don't know if he made the sizzle reel or not and she you can imagine right you know the producer sitting around a big table it's like okay what are you pitching today right and she comes on he goes let me tell you click you know and she she fires up the sizzle reel thing and the flat earth on the screen she was fired that week <laughs> just instantly because even though remember this isn't a you know this is just a television network it was that insane and it hadn't made the rounds yet in social media and social media was <clears throat> not quite fully fully formed and i love the fact that she went to our conferences uh, you know she went to raleigh and she went to some of the others and I remember when Behind the Curve came out, the VP that fired her called her. And uh, it was a woman and and said, look, she goes, I'm sorry. She goes, but what, what could I do? You know, at the time, it was ridiculous. Now, not so much. So I got to ask you, and it, to be honest with you, uh, Behind the Curve, it, doesn't that movie, it's not a flat earth movie, right? It nope. supports the globe, right? Nope. Yeah, and I think I think what they did, and I haven't watched it, and I think I haven't watched it because I don't want to get upset. <laughs> you know, I think you should it'll, watch it'll, it. You really yeah, should. No, I I should watch it, and I will watch it. But I think what they do with a lot of this stuff, though, is they'll they give themselves all the good limelight, and they show their full presentations, and then when they show like a flat Earth person, they just take cutouts yeah. and they make us look like you know, like we're crackpots. Yeah. We don't, they, they don't give us the stage. Like they will not host a real debate, but, but between somebody like yourself or one of these other, even, even Eric, even though, you know, we said what we said, like right. some of these brilliant minds that really know that, you know, flat earth Dave and stuff like he's really brave going on a lot of these platforms and having these debates with people, but it's the way that, that we get treated and the way that they, they try to manipulate things or take sound bites and only play certain things. And it's like, hold up, you didn't even let us finish our thought. Right. So like, uh, can you talk a little bit about behind the curve and how you felt you were treated throughout that process I, and I tell can. people like, yeah, it, it wasn't, you know, I, I got to spend what we, we shot that thing over a period of like seven months and you know, the director contacted me first and we, we, we talked about concepts initially you know, I believe everything works out the way it's supposed to. It was a, supposed to be just a human interest piece. 
But what changed was when they, and this was shoestring budget. These guys had normal jobs and this was a side project for, for this director uh, and these producers to where, I mean, they were paying for stuff with credit cards. You know, they were, they, this thing was running on absolute fumes to where when we got to the conference and everything was shot in order. So when we got to the, uh, the conference in Raleigh, there was a part where I was up on stage and people were asking me questions because I, I like doing Q&As. And this 12 year old kid came up to the microphone, you know, and I, I said, oh, who are because I couldn't see because of the, the lights. And I, I said, who are you? Oh, your parents brought you, you know, big applause and stuff like that. And I did not realize until I listened to the, the director's commentary because somebody told me it's like, oh, there's a director's commentary for this on on Apple. I go, oh, like on iTunes or something. And I go, OK, so I listened to it while while they were doing it. And they all chimed in. The, the editor and the director and what the lead producer chimed in and said, okay, this is when we had to make our stand against Flat Earth. Because they were, <clears throat> they, they, they kind of treated it not so seriously until all of a sudden they saw kids in the audience. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, it's all fun and games, all the kids are involved. And unfortunately for them, or fortunately for us, the movie was already basically done. So the only thing they could do is tweak it in editing. And so they used the editing and just they went after people. They didn't go after Patricia. They went after me in a couple shots, but they really went after uh, Bob and Jaren. Really, really went after them. And to to the point where Jaren to this day, oh God, I can't even imagine how many comments he gets. Because he they ended the movie with Jaren's laser test. And which which went badly only because Jaren didn't have line of sight. I, I put part of the blame on Jaren. Because he went out there two months later during the daytime and he made this comment. It's like, oh, yeah, it's the first time I've seen it during the day. It's like, what? <laughs> it's, like, it's like you never went out there during the day to see if you actually had, if it was actually level when, when you shot. It's like, well, Google Maps said it was level. It's like, oh, God. You know, it's like, yeah, Google Maps say it's level to a point. But that was that was how it ended. So anyway, the the short version and anyone that's seen it. Yeah, if you're in the community, you're going to hate it. You will probably hate it. Um, but but it made the general population feel safe about looking at the subject, meaning even the title behind the curve. Right. It's got a double meaning. You know, they're behind the curve. Right. Yeah. Because they're sort of dumb. And uh, so and I sat in with studio <laughs> audiences in different film festivals. And yeah, they in fact, what I loved about it was the first 20, 30 minutes. Most of the people in the audience that were brand new to this didn't even think it was real. They thought it was a, a, a docufiction, right? To where, yeah. I, and the story, which I've told many, many times, which is there was an editor, they showed it to just blind in Los Angeles. It, he knew nothing about anything. They just showed it to him, the final product. And he comes back, he goes, wow. He goes, where did you get the budget for this film? Right? Because he, he, he knew these guys. And they're going, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, the money you had to spend for those actors. And they played it so straight. It's like no man there were no actors it was it was absolutely legit and he's like what how is that even he goes he goes that conference was real he go, and they go yeah, yeah all that all of it was real and the same thing happened when um when people were watching in audiences where after the first 20 or 30 minutes you know they were laughing and kind of giggling so oh, it's it's a parody you know it's it's not real and then all of a sudden they're like wait a minute wait you know like i could see them elbowing each other it's like wait 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 this is real. This isn't, this isn't a joke. This is actually a real thing. And for the rest of the movie, the rest the, the, the back hour and change, just their minds were blown. So by, by the time they got to the end, luckily for us, uh, by the time they got to Jaren's test, they were, they absolutely had no idea what they had just watched. They were just, just absolutely mind blown. So anyway, so I will say this, if they didn't attack us the way they did in the movie, it wouldn't have gotten nearly exposure. Meaning I have run into, I cannot tell you how many classrooms I have done video conferences with where behind the curve is now required viewing on the syllabus. And the reason yeah. is because it's now mainstream sanctioned. Meaning, meaning uh, because it's on Netflix, well, it's got to be safe, right? It's not some fringe thing on YouTube. Oh, no, no. Netflix sanitized it and it's, it's out there. And we're... And, I mean, we've got multiple people that have done everybody. I've talked to people from grade school all the way up to people that have done their dissertations on it, uh, on the on the community at large. And and they will will quote behind the curve. So, yeah, is does it. Does it paint us in a great light? No, it doesn't. Is it a 
fair look at what was happening to us in 2017 yeah pretty fair you know it was, it was a it was a good snapshot at, at everyone what they were doing now did they bend it to their will and you know to make you know the, the mark twain quote which i love so much you know never never let the truth get in the way of a good story yes they absolutely took advantage of that uh, and i mean even down to the relationship between patricia and i which had, was long since over by the time that movie came out and you know by the time they shot the movie they was over but they painted it it was like oh it was like a current thing so i was doing radio interviews at, like my third or fourth question for all these people it's like you know how are things with the patricia what's going on with patricia it's like uh, I, I killed her and I buried her somewhere. So it's <laughs> so yeah. uh, being that I haven't seen the movie though, it's yeah. it's n more about the personalities and the characters in these in these groups more than it is about presenting evidence for oh, yeah. one side yeah, against yeah, yeah. the other. It is, right? It doesn't it have is. it's it's yeah, not it's... much for showing people the no. evidence for flat Earth and the evidence for the globe, right? No, I mean it covers basic concepts, but not a lot of the nuts and bolts. It's your standard documentary fare where you follow the the the, the people, right? The, it's like here's, yeah, establish all the characters. Here's Patricia. Here's Nathan. Yeah, yeah. Here's Mark. Here's Jaren. And then you follow them, and they're on their, you know, over a period of months, and then the big conference finale at the okay. end where yeah. we all get together, and and then we move on you know we move on from there but they hated us that that film team the, also worked out in our favor they hated us for a whole number of reasons but at the end i i knew how i didn't realize how deep-seated the hate was because they never made us never even thought about making a sequel and this move this film made the top 10 of just about every film festival they went into and again it, and it was purchased I mean, it was a slam yeah. freaking dunk. They could have done a, a sequel um, <laughs> and never even considered it. I don't even know what they're doing right now. Never. Well, never Mark, you, you're, you're so nice. And one of the coolest guys that we reached out to, and you reached out to us like pretty much immediately and was like ready to jump on board. And I just think you have a great personality and you're a fun guy to listen to. What is there not to like? What's their problem? <laughs> they're the ones with the problem. It's my, <laughs> it's my government training. We're, we're taught yeah. to be like this. That's not true. No, yeah, in fact, no, I know. Any, anyone that spends 10 minutes with me knows immediately. It's like, oh, God, he's not an agent. It's like, no, I'm either I'm either the greatest secret agent in the world or I'm the worst. And, you know, and there's, yeah. there's no middle ground there. So, no, <laughs> no. And again, what's hey. what's my what's my ultimate goal? What's my plan? It's like, well, I'm going to I'm going to be deep cover for eight years and then I'm going to do a mass shooting. What am I doing? What am I doing at that point? I'm going to do a drug ring. Human trafficking? What am I gonna do? <laughs> no, you gotta buy. You gotta buy all the robes. You gotta write that Bible, and you gotta make the Kool Aid, brother. I do. I do. <laughs> I gotta go full, full blown. Either um, oh, what was that cult in Oregon? Uh, the Bogwani? The um. Oh yes. Now I can't. I got, Come on, you, Alex. <laughs> what was the big cult in Oregon? Either do that one, or I go um, or I do Koresh. <laughs> you know that yeah. that whole thing. Well, that didn't end well. But uh, yeah, yeah, those usually don't end well. No. Or the other ones that that thought the UFO was going to come get them that that was that's not the one you were talking about though. Uh. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, the, no, uh, Raj, no, that Rajneesh was that was movement. The, the right one, I think oh, it's the, the Rajneesh. Rajneesh. Yeah, the Rajneesh where he had a whole yeah. bunch of Rolls Royces. No, no, I I don't. <laughs> In fact, I call myself a um, part time cult leader recently just to see if I could. I do believe in everything for a reason. I do believe in the grand plan. And, uh, you know, the, the something I want to bring up really fast, which is I'm really stunned that no one ever followed up. I mean, I, I lost count of how many interviews I've done. I mean, hundreds, hundreds. Um, but I, I invariably I will mention, you know, my my whole fireworks story, you know, that I was kicked out of university for manufacturing fireworks on campus. Right. Which is not a small thing. Right. That's a bad <laughs> you don't want to get caught doing that. Right. For for Indian, for Indian reservations, I was making a whole bunch of cherry bombs and M1000s and, you know, all that stuff that we play with as, as boys. And no one ever has followed up on that ever. I, it just floors me. It's like if you wanted to paint me in a bad light, you should go down that road. It's like he's a criminal. <laughs> you know, he's you know, he's a full blown. He's a full blown criminal. It's like no one even wants to touch it in fact the, the i i was amazed that you know i told the whole the the full story for my fireworks thing takes like three hours and i i did that as, for my first strange world episode as full disclosure and i told a chunk of that story to like the film team the documentary team didn't want to touch it did not want to freaking touch it why because it wasn't part of the narrative 
you know, we, we want to paint Mark as this goofy warmth type of guy. We don't want to put in his dark, his dark past. It's like, all right. Fine. Hey, it wasn't anything by the way that would arrival Jack Parsons suicide squad. Was it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Again, it, I, no. In fact, I was encouraged. Let's put this. I, I, cause I grew up on an Island. We're up in here in Washington state where Whitby, fireworks, I saw that. Fourth of July is a big deal, right? Yeah, Whid Whidbey Island, and I, I was encouraged to to do fireworks to the world, and I was actually pretty good at chemistry too. So I started. It's like I can make fireworks cheaper than this for a lot of these. So I started making my own, and and all of a sudden, then uh, then my family's like, okay, you have to stop now. Cold turkey. It's like uh, I don't think so. <laughs> gonna, and, and and honestly, I did not know a real quick side story about that. Where um, I remember I made way too many uh, six inch firecrackers. And there's a pretty big. And it's just flash powder. It's not TNT or, or C4 or anything like that. And I remember taking grocery bags full and like throwing it down on a on, on an Indian reservation fireworks stand. It's like, hey, can I trade this for rockets and some of the pretty stuff? And and then looking at me like I got a bug on my face. And like they're looking down the bags, it's like, dude, we'll we'll pay you like five dollars per unit for like everything you got here. It's like I'm doing the math. I was going. Oh, sweet. And it also occurred to me, and again, I was in college. I was barely 20. And I was like, wait, I can make money doing this? It's like, are you serious? Like, I called up my friends, like, we are going into mass production immediately. <laughs> we are going to ramp this thing up. We're going to, because again, it was the late 80s. Uh, and by the time, yeah, by the time I got to 1990, it was over. I was, wow. Yeah. So, anyway, sorry. So, no, that's that's awesome, man. I love hearing it. And I love the fact that we're going down a little bit of a different path, because like I said, that's why I went and listened to a few other podcasts that you had done recently, because we always like to take the the less traveled path on this show. And you could tell we like to have fun. Sure. So I was going to ask you, I did hear you mention on another podcast that you knew Bill Nye, the science guy, because I'll tell you what, there's two guys, three guys that me and Alex always love to trash yeah. that we would love to clothesline or hammer fist or i call my uh, my wrestling move the sweet apple pie where i punch somebody's adam's apple through the back of their throat i um so uh that i bill nye you, you have a story you said you knew bill nye the science guy and then uh so we'll start with him and then i'll ask you about okay the other two. Well, first off officially i didn't know bill nye but i knew everything about him because he's from my neck of the woods he's from here now i don't hate him like i hate elon musk Elon Musk, I, I'd love for him to trip and fall on like six or seven bullets. But when it comes to Bill Nye, just because I, I and, and and sorry, the Elon Musk thing, he just disappoints me because of all the people, of all the puppets you wanted to come up with, that's the best you could come up with. From a multinational, fake billionaire, Tony Stark wannabe piece of crap, that's who you come up with. He's not even American. <laughs> For God's sakes, he's South African. Most people don't even know. I mean, I had my uncle come back come up to me. It's like, oh, you know, he invented Tesla Motors. I was like, what? He absolutely did not. Tesla Motors had a dealership in my town in Boulder, Colorado, when I was out there for years before he bought him. Oh, anyway, so Bill Nye, the, <laughs> my, my, my beef with Bill Nye is that, again, it's the illusion that, that people buy. People... The, the I did a, a clue called the code of credibility, which is that if you wear certain uniforms, because we are reinforced through television and movies and real world for so many years, we believe, you know, a, a police uniform projects a certain thing, fire department. And when you wear a lab coat, you immediately project intelligence instantly. It's not even quite, it's like you're wearing a lab coat, confidently walking around, you are probably more intelligent you know than than the people around you and that's how they're going to feel it's it's this weird hierarchy so bill <laughs> nye started out in seattle he got a, a bachelor's of mechanical engineering he immediately abandoned it to, to become an actor he wanted to be an actor but got involved with a um, local comedy troupe in seattle of all things this is not like you know second city from chicago or one of the canadian groups this is seattle there was only one comedy group and it was called almost live it was hosted by uh, Ross Schaefer. And 
he he did some skits. You can look him up almost live on, on YouTube all, all the time. Bill Nye and almost almost live. And then all of a sudden, Ross Schaefer came up with this idea. It wasn't even Bill's idea. It's like, hey, you know what? You're tall, you're thin, you're angular looking. Put a lab coat on you. My God, you could be, you know, a, a side character in Revenge of the Nerds all day long. We could have <laughs> science experiments and and people would kind of dig it. And so he did. And it was kind of funny. It kind of worked, right? I mean, it, it, it was a role that he was he was physically perfectly set, uh, ready for. Disney just so happened to be looking for some sort of safe and sane, you know, somebody that's non-controversial that they could use for some sort of children's program. And they thought, hey, we'll just take Bill Nye as is. He doesn't swear. He doesn't use controversial topics. He just does science crap. We'll turn it into like a, a Sesame Street thing for, for our stuff. And when they any shot with them for like six years. And then the brilliance of it, he syndicated forever. He's still out there now. You, you can find it on, on some Disney stuff. You can find Bill Nye the Science Guy episodes. Because again, science lessons don't age, right? For the most part. So he does this. And because of that, over the years, right? This was a long time ago. It's 20 something years ago. Over the years, those peep kids that grew up with that, all of a sudden, the credibility was automatically there. So when these some of these kids became producers and people in the media, it's like, who? hey, who can we call to answer questions about fill-in-the-blank topic here? And they would call him. And I started noticing, it's like, why is he on a show? Or why is he on the CNN talking about climate change? Why is he on this talking about the Mars rover? Why is he talking about this crap? And it drove me insane to where I eventually when I started doing my stuff I was talking to these same producers right same guys and I go why do you keep putting him on television I go he doesn't know anything he's just a he's an actor from from Seattle he never even made it to, to Los Angeles until very very recently and they the the lines were always the same which was they said but he looks the part and then I started to understand, which was with the, the actual scientists, if you have a master's, especially if you have a P, if you have a PhD in something serious like microbiology or astrophysics, you've spent so much time on the education that all forms of communication are gone. You lose vocabulary. You, you, you're really dry. And what was happening was the, the media people, the producers were tired of trying to coax information out of these guys. You know, they'd be sitting there in the camera, just staring straight at the camera. It's like, Yes, I do believe that is true. Right. And they just stare at the camera. And, you know, it's like, you know, the, you can hear the producer screaming in the background. It's like, get him to talk. Bill Nye, it's perfect. You can just put him on there, give him some notes, and people immediately think he's more credible. And he drives me insane. I mean, again, I'm watching, watching him at the White House taking pictures with Obama. It's like, how does, how, how does that happen? So, yeah. It, it works it, it, i get it i get it the illusion is the most power perceived is power achieved and it's like if you've got a, a guy that looks like a super nerd he is a super nerd okay right? same same thing with elon you got a guy that that you want to be tony stark i'm glad they don't make the comparison as as much because he's not a freaking superhero but but it works they uh they they've convinced the general public that and he plays both sides that's the other thing he's been like trying to be like like right wing uh messiah recently you know trying you know poking the bear and saying you know oh he's coming out against joe biden it's like oh is he pro pro trump oh hey he must be on red team side now whatever sorry it's my little mini rant oh wait you're muted oh it's a rookie mistake and you hate to see it <laughs> yeah, so I was actually going to interject on this one point because I actually have experienced this firsthand. Before yeah. I left the medical field, I, I work in a completely different line of work now, but yeah. I used to work in the medical field and, I, and then I left once they started requiring the, uh, the yeah. jibby jabbies, you know, for yeah. the frontline healthcare workers. But I was an advanced EMT. So, advanced EMTs, we have IV skills. <clears throat> and I went through additional training and I found out. If I left working on the ambulance, I can make more money if I went to work for a plasma center. And uh, they trained me as a medical supervisor and I screened potential donors. And I, they, I, I was issued a lab coat and I have a bunch of tattoos. You can probably even see I have a tattoo on my neck, yeah. but I would wear a, a, a tie. I would cover up all my tattoos and I put on a lab coat. 
and I, I just had I had the plasma center and my 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 name, and it said medical supervisor. But because it was that lab coat, medical supervisor, my name, and then insignia from the company I was working for, which was BPL Plasma. Um, everybody was just doctor, doctor, doctor. Everybody called me doctor, yep, and I yep. I wasn't going to tell them no, I'm not a doctor. We are, you know, we are because hard, we are hard, we are hardwired <laughs> when it comes to authority. Um, let me give you a quick example. Um, one of the scariest science experiments they ever done, and I'm sure you've heard of it one time, maybe you've forgotten the name, is the Milgram experiment, which is where they would bring people into a room and they would say, okay, you're going to ask a person in a different room questions. If they answer wrong, you're going to push this button, it's going to give them electric shocks. And every answer they get wrong, we're up, we're up on the amps on this thing. We're up on the volts and amps, right? And again, you don't see the person in the other room. But the person that's overseeing you is wearing the full-blown white lab coat, clipboard, the whole nine yards. And the person just kept looking. It's like, you know, is this okay? You know, is it okay? He's, it sounds like he's in real trouble here. I'm hitting him with a whole bunch of volts. And what they figured out was that 60% of the time, the person sitting in that chair, as long as he got approval from the, the guy in the lab coat, he'd mm. kill him. He'd kill him dead. And in fact, keep hitting the voltage after they were dead. And it's like, and these are perfect strangers, right? Again, of course, there was no person in the other room. It was all pre-recorded audio screams. Right? There was nobody there. There wasn't even, I don't think there was even another room. And where even got scarier was if there was another person sitting next to the, you know, down on a, on a, on a desk right next to him, then the ash experiment kicks in simultaneously, which is peer pressure, which is you will go along with the herd. Even if the, what the herd is doing is absolutely makes no sense. And that percentage then went up to 90%. And it's like, you know, wow. So yeah, the the but it all stemmed from the person in the lab coat. That we per, we believe, again, doctors, why why doctors wear white, right? Instead of black. It's like, you know, black doesn't show blood nearly as much. Why do you keep wearing white? White has this weird effect on us. Yeah. Commercials, yeah. everybody in commercials, all the doctors. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a doctor. I'm wearing this coat. I'm when I do the Vegas conference next month, I am coming out. In a um, circa 1900 um, mad scientist lab coat, just to prove the point. There you go. Yeah, yeah you know what? And you sh you should. And what's funny is uh, now getting to this point where I've got on my truth journey is that's what I realized, man. Though is the infiltration of our education systems at its highest levels, and of course these these occultists and their secret societies, uh, really their hotbed like is the ivy league you know and and to get their degree you have to go through their indoctrination to to receive that degree you know and it's that's what's got scary to me now and i don't want to get into that because we've talked about it on previous episodes right but you know completely what i'm talking about now and that's the thing most most of us we don't know about that we just think like oh these people are highly educated we don't know what they're being educated with you know <laughs> the the secret societies at their core is influence which is what what you were just saying there. One, and it's no different than a lab coat. It's it's peer pressure at its highest level. You are in a secret society. You are expected to do. You know, you want to pay your dues. This is your dues. You will do what we say. Oh, we'll we will justify it for you because we're a secret society and we know better. And so you wonder, it's like, how can they do these terrible things? How can they do this? How it's like because for them it's justified. Again, it's it's part of it's hardwired. But the other part is the the simple ash experiment which is peer, that's concentrated peer pressure, which is you are in a group wow. now. These are your peers. This is where you wanted to be. So you're going to do what they say. Why, why wouldn't you? They didn't get in trouble for it. And the, you know, that's all one person do it. It's tell you, it's like, oh, dude, I totally did that last year. No, you're, you're totally cool. Okay, that's great. Are we going to bury the body? <laughs> that is absolutely terrifying though and i learned something new just now just you telling me about that so that's something that i'm gonna have to go look in, look into yeah. um you know i did want to ask you too though because my buddy alex over here man he's a big stephen hawking fan what's your uh what's your opinion on that guy well okay the the, the stephen hawking First thing I, I would like to say, I'd, I'd like to settle the argument really quick because he was part of a long-term argument that you know, I don't think he ever had personally with uh, Albert Einstein, where Albert Einstein, even though people, if you want to question his, his math and everything, he was extremely quotable. People made a lot of money in the greeting card industry because he didn't copyright any of his things. He was the guy that said, 
gravity should be take the blame for people falling in love clever damn clever and again, <laughs> was all sorts of nerds that got that greeting card for decades and decades because of that he never got a dime but he said that um god doesn't play dice and i thought that was very very interesting and stephen hawking then chimes in supposedly decades later and says no god actually does play dice here's why blah 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 you know that that argument the winner but do i think do i think I, i'll just come out and say it at some point he couldn't communicate anymore not not you know not with any articulation and some point i think somebody took over his computer screens remotely and so when he was asked questions and honestly and again, I'm speaking from a producer standpoint. Why wouldn't you, right? People are looking. It's like hey, he's one of the smartest people in the world. Well, he might have been back in the day, but he's not that guy anymore, right? Doesn't matter. People want to see him answer questions. It's like if you have a guy behind him, you know, hooked up to a wire that hears the questions and be like, and starts typing in stuff, you're not going to question how he got as many words because I would think he would be a man of fewer words, <laughs> given that he couldn't actually use his fingers. He was using his eyeball, but whatever. We're going to gloss over that like we do the spacesuit on the moon. And I think, yeah, we don't know what year it happened, but I think that's what it was. And there was even speculation that at some point, because he got, you know, kind of twisty, that at some point they even replaced him with a different guy. And and then there was just basically just somebody they were wheeling around and and um, and typing stuff. Sure, sure. I I... I like putting myself again. This is my dark side. I like putting myself in the other people's shoes so I can understand them. Would I have done that if I was, you know, part of the Illuminati or whatever group? Yeah, yeah, I would have. Absolutely. It's like as long as he, he's, he can still be wheeled around, yeah, and nobody knows any different. <laughs> Freaking type whatever you want because then you can remember his his opinion helps dictate policy in some cases. So if you have an agenda, you can feed it through that wheelchair monitor. <laughs> and people are being like, it's like, well, I didn't expect it for Steven to say that. But you know what? I see his point. You're going to give him the benefit of the doubt because we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt anyway because he's handy capable. Can we even say handicapped anymore? I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just I had to bring him up because uh, Alex and you can go ahead and talk for a, for a moment. But uh, and and. You, I'm being facetious when I said that he's not a fan of his like uh and then it was funny because we had another uh guy on our show and he said for all we know he was trying to order a pizza like right. you know what I mean like <laughs> right but what, but why, <laughs> you know or something but why yeah but well, why yeah why ruin like like anybody yep. in in media says why ruin a good story why ruin it why yeah. why, why not keep going people want to see it's kind of like um what I've been talking about you know anyone that I get the chance professional sports I go, there was a wonderful line in a movie 20-something years ago, um, uh, Any Given Sunday, with Al Pacino, if you ever remembered. Uh, Oliver Stone directed it about professional football. And there was this wonderful line that just got glossed over where uh, Pacino was in a bar looking at the monitor. He goes, you know, the first time they went to a TV timeout, that's when the game changed. Because it wasn't about winning or losing anymore. It was about the advertising revenue. It was about the money. Because up until that point, look, momentum is a big, big thing. If all of a sudden the TV networks are like, we're going to timeout right now. Everyone stop playing, right? It's like with the coaches, that's the last thing you'd want to do. It's like, what are you talking about? We got the momentum. We're driving down the field, right? Every every coach knows this. It's all about momentum. And so um, but what I was getting at is, is that the the money changes everything. Once you, if it can be rigged, it will be rigged. And I don't care if it's professional sports or it's media or whatever it is. You know, any professional sport, as you guys know, I mean, you're wearing a Yankees outfit. Baseball is one of the few ones that you can't because it's either a strike or it isn't. And he either caught it or he didn't. Right. It, and it's very, the, the baseball, the, the margin of error is very, very little. Basketball and football, you can do it all day long, all day freaking long. You call holding in football every single play if you want and yeah so sorry yeah you know, no so, I, that, that's you, and, and and by the way dude this is a little league man i was coaching little league but yes i i am a yankees fan though there you but go. uh but this is a the the my shirt from when i coached <laughs> <laughs> alex doesn't like Yankees, but my point was there is yeah. <laughs> the, the bigger point is you give the one of the oldest well it is the the number one rule in media which is give the people what they want and that is unfortunately 
the best, you may be the best team, but if the fans don't want to see you win the title nowadays, you're not winning the title. You're just not, uh, you, you got you, the flashiest players, the most controversial players that they, that's where you, that's what you go with. And so again, the circling all the way back to Stephen Hawking, it's like, yeah, Stephen Hawking shouldn't have been able to, be able to type a single thing, right? I don't care what technology he was using, but the people wanted to see him comment on stuff all the way up until yeah. the point where it's like, it's like, is he breathing? Yeah, he's been breathing for a week. Okay, we got to tell people he's dead, <laughs> you know, type, type of deal. Uh, I was I was just going to jump in and say that he's probably the only person that's ever lived with ALS for 50 years. There you go. There you go. Like, oh, oh, hell, if you're going <laughs> to, you want to go down that road really quick. Um, we got <laughs> which is um look at look at the the milestones we've run into recently uh and I, I don't think we're breaking any rules by saying this look damar hamlin is the first athlete in history to come back from a major heart attack and then go back to, to being on the field now he's not playing by the way he's not he's not getting a lot of reps but the fact that it's, it's like i i called this absolutely i i should have been right but it's like, oh no, his career's over. I go, no doctor is ever going to clear him. And it's like, oh no, no, we have three three NFL doctors that cleared him already. It's like, oh, no, how how do you even insure him? He's done. He's cooked. But because, <clears throat> bear with me for for thirty seconds, which is because the fans, it was too dark. The fans wanted him back. The fans wanted him to at least stay on the field because remember they're normalizing things now that i never ever thought that people would have bought into it which is like it's like oh no no it's almost it's almost completely normalized that you could drop dead both of you guys could drop dead right now for whatever reason and you know what it just happens in fact it happens all the time it's like really yeah it didn't, didn't happen five years ago but it is it i mean yeah. the fact that i have a section in my podcast i'm like I'm, I'm it's called lucky unlucky and i do it every tuesday and, you know, people send me it's not, and basically you're lucky if you're alive, right? So if you suffer something, you know, if you just have some dis disabilitating in illness, I've got two people on this week's list from two completely different parts of the world that had quadruple amputations, right? And for no, one of them, one of the kids, 14, right? From blood clots. And, and um, I'm trying, and he's the, one of the lucky ones, you know, compared to, uh, that's really kind of a toss up there. The rest of them just, you know, just drop like sacks of dirt for no for no apparent reason. So, yeah. Anyway, DeMar Hamlin, that was one of the things where it was it was too dark, too quick. It was too scary. And so they're like, oh, no, no, no he's back. He's back. He's he's totally fine. It's like, really? Is he? Are we sure it's him? Really? Because his parent, because his family were selling all his luxury cars like a week after it happened. If you caught that little story, still trying to figure that mm -hmm. one out. I wasn't aware of that one. But, you know, it's it's funny that you mentioned DeMar Hamlin because I have, uh, well, he's related to me through marriage, but I have an individual that lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, who was a Cincinnati Bengals fan. It was in this, like on the 50 yard line in the second row. And he could walk down a few feet and high five players. And he heard everything that happened during that game. When the cameras were cutting away, he was sitting there. And he says everything that they say on ESPN and the news was what he was like that didn't happen i was i was right there i could hear everything that they were saying he was like for sure 100 percent dead they didn't revive him they did nothing like the players were in mourning immediately yeah. when they ran off the yeah. field and he was like he's like I, he's like i witnessed that guy die he's like he didn't come back to life he did nothing and even if he was out i mean i'm not a doctor but i'm a medic and i know if you're out for that extended period of time yeah like you have brain damage and all kinds of stuff yeah. and and this guy's like almost ready to suit back up and start playing again yeah i ain't buying it dude no no and then I'm just not... the weird stuff when they when they when they wheeled him out to that sporting event and he wore that disgusting jacket where he was blaspheming jesus and it's just like yeah. you know it like that's just this kind of stuff that they like to sneakily yeah. do and throw in our face you know it, is, it has been so blatant recently to where yeah to, to your point there where he the i've what well, it's never happened where all of a sudden they, the the game that was it that they called the game right right then and there it's like oh no we're not we're, i mean you could see the players faces right it was different from a, like such and such blew out his knee or something like that well i know those faces when well, it's like oh it's sad you know we know he wants to get hurt when you're a pro but the the faces of the players when when he went down that was completely different 
those players are like, oh crap. It's like this is this is not good. And and they all have, I'm sure, heard the whispers. Now, the funny thing, well, I shouldn't say it's funny, but the 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 interesting thing about it was is that most of the players I believe didn't get the real shot anyway. They got the saline solution because that's the you'd never want to give it to them. But like and with anything, some people are gonna slip. Yeah, their investments. Yeah. They're they're well, not just that, billions. but you don't you don't yeah. want that moment happening on the field more than once. You know, not during live television. I mean, Monday Night Football. You couldn't have asked for a worse time for that to happen. Well, look at the other look at the other sporting events around the world. Collegiately, we had a couple marathon runners drop oh, yeah. dead the other day. We had a, a collegiate swimmers, uh, a bunch of European soccer players, and soccer players from around the world. Apparently, soccer um, wasn't safe at all. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, yeah. and it's crazy because now it trends sudden death syndrome, or oh, you know, and, and 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 or just all of a sudden, all these people have um, you know genetic heart problems that that were passed down. Like, no man, these are tip top shape athletes, especially somebody who runs a marathon. I'm sorry, those people's resting heart rates are like 40 beats per minute, and mm. these people are dropping dead with cardiac problems. Like, no way, it is your freaking injectable medication, and we know it. Yeah. And uh, real, yeah, real, we're not buying it real quick before whatever questions you have left, which is um, that, you know, there's like the somebody compiled a quick list of, of things you see in the news now, which didn't used to be a thing. Medical emergency, player collapse, player died, died in sleep, cardiac arrest, brain aneurysm, blood clot, heart stop, died suddenly and unexpectedly. Youth died, youth collapsed, athlete collapsed, athlete died, died after a brief illness. And that was it. <laughs> and it's like, are you kidding? what's that link? Oh no! I was just a list I, I put together. I, I'll I'll throw. Oh them man, in. I want. Yeah, dude, you I want, want those? the I want that in the show notes, dude. I like that. Yeah, and and again, they've normalized it now to where the. I think that's all. Yeah, uh, they've normalized it now to where people. I, I, look, I I know the general public. They believe what they're told. But it's it's heartbreaking for me to know that there are people that they're going to go down, right? They're going to go down, and their last words will be like, "Well, the COVID got me." Right? It's like, what? Really? Really? That's that's. And I suppose ignorance is bliss in this case. But the fact that I, you know the I had I've been watching this now for three years, and it just drives me insane. So whatever. It's blue team mostly. So. Like the red team's actually in pretty good shape by comparison. A lot of them, <laughs> not all of them. And but, you, but... you know what? And, and I, I'm I'm not going down this rabbit hole, but I do want to say it, man. I yeah. used to, I was one of those people that was on the Trump train before, but I've gotten off. I'm definitely not on the liberal train. I'm not playing that game anymore. I'm not good. putting my faith in any man. I'm putting my faith in Jesus alone, brother. Good. And I don't have any faith in this system anymore. Good for you. You know, and, uh, and, and I think I think Trump has so many things like this is the guy that pushed Operation Warp Speed. Sure. So let's pump the brakes on him being for us. You know, this is the guy that's writing things that are like the minority report where they can convict us of crimes before because artificial intelligence can predict them. Have you seen that? I forgot that bill that he signed. Right. Um, like right, right, right. this is, he, he is, this he, is, is po- he is just part of the big polarizing process. Um, uh, one of my things for tonight will be that the, the United States is being divided deliberately because apparently w- no one was willing to take us on unless we looked vulnerable. So they've created multiple avenues now to make us look as weak. I mean, the, the United States has never looked weaker ever. Mm. And and to where um, two quick things I want to float out there, which is um, one, if you haven't looked up the, the story already, look up the the Ted Cruz thing where he said that, yeah, you know what they're going to do because Biden's fading so fast. He goes, do you wait? He goes, they'll go to the convention in Chicago, uh, you know, for the Democratic convention. He goes, they will suggest Michelle Obama as the uh, as the mm. Democratic nominee. I know. And, you know, the story behind that again. Rest in peace, Joan Rivers from 2014. Oh, yeah. Can't believe uh, that Michael. Was nine... Yep. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe that was nine years ago. And the other thing really quick was. Um... Jeez, that was. Wow. Oh, right? That's crazy. I had to look it up. It's like, wow. And I remember that like it was yesterday. The um, was uh, if you haven't you, you've been kind of aware of the the test. that's going to be a week from tomorrow. Uh, uh, the big national emergency broadcast test. OK, yes, yes, yes. I'm yeah, aware that, of this. And, and supposedly not... the. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I know the 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 general theories behind it, but the bare minimum, bare minimum, mm-hmm. do not. Yeah, I'm telling anyone, that. do not be on the highway if you guys release this before then. Do not be on the highway, uh, the, during the middle. I mean, I can't believe they're doing it during the middle of the day on a Wednesday. 
they're doing it at some 11 20 pacific 2 20 uh eastern and that's all phones all television all radio all simultaneous i go can you imagine being on a freeway when everybody gets and it doesn't matter if your phone's off or on it your phone will activate mm -hmm. and um you imagine all these amber alerts going off like you're on a, a six lane highway people looking at their phone never got one of those before it's like what the heck's going on i can't cannot be a good thing and now yeah, i have what, heard the what date is this again what date is this again next um next wednesday a week from next tomorrow, wednesday the, the, the fourth at Middle, what time um where are you i'm in we're mountain time both alex and i i'm in new mexico uh, okay. he's in canada so it'll be 12 20 your time lunch okay 12 20 yeah i'll time. be at work and you can look so, it up and it's, my kids will be at school i'm really surprised again they'll pro probably run a news story the day before i would hope or maybe tomorrow you would think but um again it's the first time i mean we're talking air raid sirens the whole nine yards and you know you again being of the truth of community you know what happens sometimes during tests right because it's a wonderful way because people will be walking around going it's like oh you know nothing to worry about it's a test yeah but that building's on fire over there oh no it's fine it's probably part of the drill you know, it's, I'm not, I'm a little concerned was why I'm telling people the bare minimum. I don't care if it activates some weird thing and all, and anyone that ever got the shot all of a sudden keels over. That's a, that's a fringe side of it. For me, the bare minimum is you're activating every phone in the country simultaneously. And I just can't see anything good coming out of it. No, absolutely so. not. You know, and it's almost like uh, the War of the Worlds broadcast. It's almost like a there you it's go. a live psychological experiment to see how we react, you know, and right. what and how <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Again, people, yeah. The, or the the again, I know there's people saying, oh, you can turn your phones off. It's like, no, the it's designed to work when your phone is off. It's a complete override to to your phone system. So, I mean, yeah, you could suppose you could put your phone in a Faraday cage. Actually, you could probably, here's some irony, you could probably put it in the microwave because the microwave is a Faraday cage. So, nice. and, and it might not go off. Just make sure to remember to take your phone out. So, I anyways. should test that on the microwave at work. I just need to clean that thing out before I stick my phone in there. Yeah, stick your phone <laughs> and then have it, have it called from another thing. I think it might work, but I don't know all the, fre the, the frequencies that a microwave stops. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much time we have left because I know you have to do a hard you, stop because you you're got going on 10 another minutes. podcast. Ten minutes. What do you got? You're the hardest working man. So, no, dude, no, I didn't Dave, David get... Weiss works harder than me. But go ahead. Well, I mean, you're a hard working man, though. Thank you. Um, so I do want to get into some of this splatter stuff with you because, and I'm just going to bring up a few that I've heard you talk about that I would like you to talk to specifically our listeners because I, I know we have some people that aren't uh, sold on flat earth. Sure that listen to the show because we talk about more than just flat earth but i was going to bring up like three of my favorite ones and i i love the way when you talked about uh the vacuum next to the container okay um so i'm going to ask you to do that one and maybe uh the size of shadows things was brilliant so okay. there's two right there that you can do well, for let me us. let me do and, i can i can do i'll do the abbreviated version of the five so okay who is calling me i don't care so uh, the, the five, so there was a, a physicist uh, in Georgetown that was going to debate me. And they said, come up with five questions. I go, okay, five questions. So the first one would be long distance photography. Well, why can we see too far, right? The HD technology has changed everything. You go to the beach, there's a lighthouse in the distance. There's a boat in the distance. You should not be able to see it because the curvature is eight inches per mile per mile, which is eight inches per mile squared. HD now means we can zoom in on these things. Refraction can only go so far. Eventually, you should be able, you know, the, and the only limit to what we can see is the thickness of the atmosphere itself, because remember, we're not breathing in nothing. It's mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. Vacuum versus the grav, you know, vacuum of space versus gravity, which is um, the vacuum will win every single time, which is, uh, uh, let's say there's a, a vacuum chamber above you. You can ask any submarine guy, anybody that's working in deep sea oil rigs, anything like that, anything with pressure differential. So if you're in, there's a vacuum chamber above you and you have a valve, you pop, you pop it, right? What will happen? The air will instantly, violently rush upstairs. It's not like the movies. The movies has to do everything for, for dramatic effect. It's over instantly. The, the air will absolutely rush upstairs and equalize because that's what happens. Remember, in a vacuum chamber, there's nothing. There's no oxygen. There's no nitrogen. It's like a fast version of um, if, you, if you had a, a thing of water behind a barrier and you pull the barrier like a dam breaking right the 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 water pressure everything's going to equalize and, and rush imagine that multiplied by a thousand that's what it is so the question is if 
when you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? Why are we still breathing? You know, the, remember, it should the, the outside of this globe supposedly is this huge, immense vacuum. And you say, well, it's gravity. Gravity's holding it down. I go, really? The same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room, in your living room, from rushing upstairs just now. That same gravity is holding everything down and not ripping off into space. And people, they look at me and they're like, I, I don't understand. And scientists will say, well, it has to be that way. Otherwise, we'd be dead. I go, so that's your argument. I go, it has to be gravity. Otherwise, we'd be dead. It can't be anything else. It can't be that we're actually living in a pressurized system. It's called air pressure for a reason. And doesn't the other thing, real quick, um, doesn't greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Um, third one, which would be the eclipse shadows, which I love because I was in um, an eclipse during the 2017. So if the moon is 2,000 miles wide, that's what they tell us. We only say it's about 50 miles wide, give or take, maybe 70. The blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. Well, that's kind of a coincidence because that's what we kind of say the, the moon size actually is. But you're saying that the moon, which is 2,000 miles wide, the shadow condenses down to about 70 miles through whatever optical properties you, you think. Even though the, that doesn't happen when the Earth is in front of the sun, the shadow on the moon should turn the moon into a giant eyeball. And it doesn't. You always see waxing and waning crescents and, and, uh, or it goes totally red. Or something like that, but but you never see the the, the eyeball shadow happen. But remember, because if it condenses down, it should be 250 miles wide. The moon's 2,000 miles wide. People don't understand. That's all right. Uh, the fourth one, which is the uh, the moon shadow temperature, which I love so much, and I didn't come up with it. I can't remember who did. It was somebody that called into the show years ago. They said, "Hey, do you know that it's actually colder? The the moon's generating a cold light." And I go, "I don't get it." And they go, so, "Well, if you're in the um." in the sun it's 90 degrees in the sun it's 80 degrees in the shade we all know that the object blocks some of the the, the rays and and so it becomes um it's it's cooler in the shade but it's opposite in the moon meaning it's 50 degrees in the moonlight it's up to 63 degrees i think that the furthest range we had was like 13 degrees fahrenheit in the moon shade Ooh, how is that even possible and we can test this all day long you can test it with infrared um thermometers you, you can test this with um uh, all sorts of fun uh, gauges. And but he's, here's where it gets even weirder. You take a magnifying glass to sunlight, right? You can burn things, right? It condenses it down, burn things. Take a magnifying glass to moonlight, it gets even colder. And you can, you can test this with, I think I got one of these things lying around here, a little $20 point and click, click uh, infrared th or little thermometer right here. They use it for engine blocks and asphalt and crap like that. 20 bucks at a hardware store. You can test this out all day long. No one's ever, never come back and and rebuttaled that one last but not least we got time uh last but not least is the uh, the van allen radiation trap question which is if the van allen radiation belts are deadly then how the americans get through them multiple times without any shielding meaning the the only things that can stop radiation van allen radiation belts announced in 1959 by van allen of nasa how you know and the only three things that can that can stop radiation are um, lead gold which is twice as dense as lead or a whole bunch of water which we use in power plants but the americans didn't use that we used plastic and we used aluminum that does nothing to to radiation and we did multiple trips and nobody died nobody got radiation poisoning nobody even got cancer there's still i think there's like four of these guys still walking around today right they all died of natural causes. Absolutely fine. So, and you say, well, okay, well, maybe it isn't deadly, right? Maybe the Van Allen belts, maybe they're wrong. Maybe it isn't deadly. It's like, really? Okay, go to nasa.gov or you can, you can just look it up online. There's a little video out there called Orion Trial by Fire, which is the the um, NASA video, which says we're, we're working on the Mars thing, but we can't test the capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem yet. We can't keep people in, in capsules. It's like, what are you talking about? You solved it perfectly in the 60s. It was flawless. It's absolutely flawless. What, what what happened? What what happened between now and then? So when it with the future space projects, if you start hearing about Artemis or any of the SpaceX crap, tell me, tell me what shielding they're using. Tell me, tell me how they're doing it. What you know, because they're they're planning on supposedly going to the moon, even though Artemis 2 blew up, was one of the biggest firework shows ever. Uh no. It's, it's absolute joke. They're they're done. They're struggling because they can't kick the can down the road too much further. Uh, all they're doing now is supposedly landing probes. They're saying, oh, yeah, India landed yeah. a probe. Russia tanked a probe. Israel tanked a probe. Why haven't we launched <laughs> any probes? 
Uh, I want to talk about that badass Indian probe that looked like a Galaga spaceship from 1985's <laughs> arcade game that also kind of resembled a Mason symbol. <laughs> but yeah, the the graphics they used. Now, granted, it was a graphic representation, but it was horrible. Look, I come from the video game industry. We wouldn't have used this back in the 90s. It was awful. It was absolutely, it was like uh, Atari graphics. And yet, you know, all the people, all you did was you convinced a billion people in India <clears throat> that they, they sent a probe on the moon. It was brilliant. And they supposedly did it, what did I say? They did it for $75 million? That that was the part. That was, it wasn't that yeah. they said they went to the moon. They said they did it for $75 million. I was going, what are you talking about? That's that's one day worth of NASA budget. I go, you can't exactly. even buy Exactly. You can't even buy a super yacht for for seventy five million. You can't even buy out the rest of LeBron's contract for seventy five million dollars. And you went to the moon. Oh, that's just insane. <laughs> but again, the you all you have to do. Let me let me end it with this because we're we're getting we're getting down there. And then if you have a follow up question, go ahead. Which is the reason why they get away with it is the same reason why everyone outside this country believes us. So because I well, I I've done things in different countries and I said I go forget about the Americans. The Americans we just believe for patriots' sake. You know, wave our little little flag and but i asked you know when you're in a different country i go why do you think the americans went to the moon they all say the same thing they said well it was on television and your news would never lie about something like that you don't know us at all <laughs> we lie about everything all the time so yeah that's that's why you know if it's on tv again why the spacesuits work if it's on tv we assume and it's on the news it's absolutely credible and which is why I, I throw the the following statement to people. I go, I go, so there's no fake news. They go, there's no fake news. And I go, really? I go, resolve these two sentences. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Can't have both. And yet, you know, it's like, well, no, CNN is absolutely lying to you. It's like, really? Because they're saying the same thing about you guys. So there is fake news. It's like, well, yeah, but only with them because they're right wing extremists. Only them because they're libtards whatever oh, insane. okay what, what you got last thing oh man we're just uh we're so thankful that you came on the show we had a uh, we had a ton of fun man i would love to bring you bring you back again yeah. and, and continue continue on with more stuff because we just like to have fun on firmamental um real quick i'm just gonna let you uh let the firmamentalists know where they can find you those that haven't seen your stuff just uh lead them to what you'd like them to look at talk about your book uh, whatever you'd like to leave them on, and then I'll say my outro. Okay. Uh, don't even worry about writing things down. Just go into any search engine and type in Flat Earth Mark. You will find me. It'll take you down a rabbit hole, and eventually you will get to my stuff. I don't care what search engine it is. Um, I don't generally promote products. If you want to buy my books, great. If you want to see the documentary, great. I don't get a nickel off of that. Um, if you want to see some cool stuff, get the app. Uh, which is done by one of uh, our guys in our community. It's called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, I held off getting it for the longest time until I thought it was ready. And it's absolutely wonderful. And and uh, and the conference. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're if you curious, there's a, we're doing the big Flat Earth conference in Las Vegas, October 21st and 22nd. I will be opening it in my lab coat, and hopefully I'll see some of you there. There you go. Oh man, Flat Tober Fest, man! I forgot to bring that up, but we can bring that up next time. We'll bring you back after you, uh, after that has been hosted, and we because we want to hear all about that experience. Okay, because I'm not going to be able to go. Oh, that's all right. It's it should be a lot of fun. I I can't I can't wait. Hey man, hopefully somewhere down the line, uh, the Firmamental Podcast will be involved in one of those things. And uh, hey, it's been a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you for coming on uh, Firmamental you. Podcast and. You know what we always say, folks, protect your dome, and we'll see you next time. I see what you did there. Thanks, guys. I got to run. Hello, DC. Hello, Mike.